Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to 2015. This is the first uh, Magic Online video that I'm making, and I'm doing it with one of my favorite decks, Sneak and Show. So, uh, we won the die roll. We'll definitely be electing to go first. And, yet yeah, we can't complain with this hand. Uh, we're going to keep and probably turn one Brainstorm trying to find a fatty since we have the show and tell, and if we find another blue card, we have Force of Will. If we brick, we'll have to fetch... Uh, we might be disguised. I mean, there might be some merit to waiting a turn, depending on what our opponent does. Mm, no, no. Unless this is a thought seize type effect. Alright, so it looks like we're probably against elves, so we're definitely going to be uh, casting show and tell immediately. We're casting Brainstorm immediately, trying to find a fatty in the top three. And we did. But no, Oh, wait, we do have a blue card. So we will put the second Emerald Cool on bottom. Draw this. Sometimes this deck is quite simple to play. Cast this. And cast Show and Tell. I feel like this deck is one of the the best. Uh, what what what's those infomercials where like it's like I became a self-employed billionaire and so can you. Just follow these easy steps of finding Emrakul and casting show and tell. You too could win matches of magic just like me. No. Oh. Well, that was quite a shock, but <laughs> usually when that trigger happens, you're dead. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> crater Hoof startled me for a second. That might have been the weakest Crater Hoof I've ever seen in my life. To be fair, I have seen a... Uh, not your turn, Crater Hoof. Uh, it was an opponent that uh, I cast Crater Hoof to uh, kill him, and he uh, Restoration Angeled a uh, a clone, an actual clone. This was this was quite a few years ago, and he made a Crater Hoof to like get enough toughness to stay alive. And if he ripped uh, another clone effect, he would have won the game by making another Crater Hoof. It was a pretty sweet game. What's going on? Crop rotation? Yeah, we'll let that exist. This is going to give him two mana, maybe two into four. Sack this. I, I don't know. So three, four mana. So he's going to try to combo us out here. Uh, we're just going to not let that happen. Mostly because we don't want him to get enough permanence. <laughs> Odds are he's not going to be able to get that combo to go off anyway, but we want to make sure that we just get to take all his permanents with, with the uh, Annihilate trigger. Yup. Alright, so sideboarding against this deck has changed a little bit for me since uh, I don't have as many Pyroclasm effects, but the important cards are Grafter's Cage and Pyroclasms, and the cards that are just... Completely unplayable are Dig Through Times, Overmasters, and all the counter magic. So we have to play a different game plan, right? Because we're cutting all of our soft counter spells at Dig Through Times and Overmasters and only bringing in these four. So with these two extra slots, I've been bringing in the over the Omniscience just so I can sometimes have the nut draw of Show and Tell Omniscience into Grizzlebrand that draws me into Emrakul or vice versa, just casting Emrakul. And now this gives us the ability to go off faster against a combo deck that can sometimes just rip our hand apart and then just go off. Um, another way to look at this matchup is you keep your dig through times because they are bringing in thought seizes and uh, grafters or, and uh, cabal therapies. Uh, so what we can do is just take out a sneak attack and this and bring in these dig through times. It makes our force tools a little bit better and I think that's what I'm going to do. Uh, 
I think we're okay with cutting one fatty. Since we have preordain, I think that'll be fine. Plus, like, we either shove, but if we don't shove, we never really want to flood on fatties. That's how uh, other combo decks are theoretically slower than you beat you. But to be honest, this hand is not great. I'm going to keep it. Um, because we are just looking for two combo pieces and our opponent mulliganed. Let's just hope he doesn't Cabal Therapy turn one for Brainstorm. Don't think they will. They're always too afraid of you just comboing off. The range of a keep for this deck is actually more on this line than just having too many uh, combo pieces. All right, so Quarian Ranger is able to return a forest. Which, if he needs to, uh, if he only has one lander, this will be able to uh, cast two spells, which is great. Uh, but yeah, we're just going to start off with this preordain. Uh, yep, I'd like to at least keep one card that forces him maybe to uh, play hand disruption, even though like I don't really care if he looks at this hand and takes a card from it. We do want to protect our combo pieces, but we have so much manipulation that we should just be able to find copies of things. Like, if he thoughts he says, I'm not going to protect against it. Like, his deck also is a combo deck, and the clock is very low because all the creatures are 1-1s. One one's. So, guys, Curdle, this is probably Green Sun for one then. Nope, and here comes the thought sees. Right, with a Cradle. Yeah, we'll let that happen. <clears throat> Who knows, depending on what these three cards are, this might be the card he takes anyway. <sighs> Since it wasn't a ponder, he knows there's not going to be like a card on top of my deck that I know about. Uh, and yeah, took the sneak attack. Deathrite Shaman. So the clock is now four or three damage a turn with two cards in hand. But we have protection against uh, any natural order draw. That's perfect. Uh, yeah, I think what we want to do is cast Ponder and then hold up Brainstorm to protect some cards. And wow, that's just, uh, that's, that's perfect. I couldn't ask for anything better. Um, we're going to put Dig Through Time on the bottom and draw the sneak attack. This way we don't have to uh, fight. Uh, fight through his uh, another thought season. Now if it's Qual Therapy, it gets a little bit more awkward because if we let him resolve, he's just going to take Brainstorm and then he gets his pick, but then we get to resolve one of these next turn. So, it's difficult to want to cast Brainstorm, but we will, but the Emrakul will just go back on top of our deck. Alright, so Wirewood Symbiote doesn't actually do anything, and plus that he tapped this. Now he's just setting himself up to cast Cabal Therapy. Nope. No, he just wants to eat with that. Alright, well... What we're going to do now is um, I'm going to brainstorm so we can get that dig through time in our hand. Oh, wow. Multiple dig through times. And Just in case we're gonna we're gonna keep one. But I want to actually just go show and tell sneak attack Emrakulum just just to pretty much lock him out of the game, give him no outs next turn. Like maybe like hand disruption into something could potentially beat our Emrakul. Um I'm I'm gonna play this very safe.
since we have brainstorm for next turn to try to find another fatty and we still have yeah he's going to be able to protect one of his lands and one of his elves here but You know, if we just show and tell him this, now I feel like, I don't know, he would have to hand disruption and have natural order, but we couldn't beat it. Uh, I have no idea if he has a Krakus, but we're not going to allow that to be a thing. Wait, what would he have went for there? He could have bounced it, but he would have had to lose all his guys. Yeah, I don't know why I forced that. And why he didn't pick up a creature. Oh well. I was just like thinking he was going to crack us and then kill me, but I already had my trigger, so that wouldn't have mattered. Alright, so dried armor beats. What could he have went and gotten there that would scare me? I don't think anything. We might get Brainstorm locked or we might just kill him. Alright, so we're not going to get locked. Bottom, bottom. That gives us more insurance against a couple elves, which buys us at least six turns probably. Especially since I'll probably just pop this off right away, because he might just draw an elf. So I didn't draw an elf. Uh, yeah, might as well just get rid of the city. I mean, if we drew a force, I guess we could play Lotus Puddle and just have Force Will up. That could be worth something. That should hopefully get us where we want to go. We have to actually sack it to have enough resources. And now this should just find us... No, it does not. Alright, well, it's going to find us Ponder and a Preordain. We'll cast Ponder first, because this gives us more looks, and we got there, so we'll just go like this, 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 and pass the turn. Oh yeah, he can't fetch land anymore, is that one? Interesting. Huh. Alright, he's got a, a Sentinel, and we have a Gristlebrand. All right, there's round one. Uh, hopefully we can uh, win three more and win 11 packs and show you all the power that is actually Sneak and Show, which I think is a very well-positioned deck right now. And But more on that in round two.